Hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to do something a little bit different. Today we're going to be using Remote Installation Services, which is a service available on the Windows Server operating system, to image these two machines. And in this case, with image, I mean install a copy of Windows over the network and uh, get it set up. The system on the left is the Compaq iPack Legacy Free Edition PC with a cell around 500 MHz and 256 MB of RAM. And on the right, we have the Compaq Evo N1020V, which is a Pentium 4 machine with a gigabyte of RAM. We're going to be installing Windows 2000 Service Pack 4 on the iPack and Windows XP Professional Service Pack 3 on the Compaq Evo, both at the same time over the network using remote installation services, like I mentioned before. So, um, to get into the groove here, let's actually take a look at what Remote Installation Services does and how I've got it set up. Alright, we're at the desktop now, so let's take a look at how I've got Remote Installation Services set up. I've got it installed on a virtual machine called Legacy WDS, which is what I installed here. I called it Legacy WDS because this is the Legacy Deployment Server. WDS stands for Windows Deployment Services, which is the successor to the Remote Installation Services. Has quite a lot more options, but the main difference is the uh, that WDS dropped support for Windows 2000 and Windows XP deployments using the regular installation method for copying the R386 folder. The uh, WDS uses Windows image files or WIM files in order to deploy an image. This was introduced with Windows Vista and was used well throughout uh, Windows Vista 7, 8, 10, so it's still in use today. But Remote Installation Services doesn't rely on that, it just copies the Windows image from the i386 folder. So in order to deploy Windows 2000 or XP, you need Remote Installation Services to uh, get that working correctly. So in order to add an image to Remote Installation Services, you basically just need to run through this setup in the wizard here. Here you can add a uh, new operating system, it just point it to the installation files and it will start copying it over, you can give it a name, etc. I'm not going to go through how to set up it, uh, the entire thing uh, by itself. In order to run Windows Installation Services, you need uh, you can choose two operating systems. You can choose Windows Server 2000, which will support uh, remote installation services throughout, or Windows Server 2003, uh, RTM, or Service Pack 1. Service Pack 2 introduced Windows Deployment Services, which means that if you don't have your legacy images set up already, you cannot use it in legacy or mixed mode, and it will not work properly. That's at least my experience in this. So uh, sticking to Service Pack 1 for deploying 2000 and XP is the best way I've found. We're looking at a different virtual machine now. This is LFS01, or Legacy File Server number 1. And uh, I use this to get the files to the machines, uh, in this case the driver files. So it's just you know a separate Windows server that I built, or all that I set up in this case. Uh, to share files with older computers. This is not part of my test lab domain. Let's just take a look at this here. This is a standalone machine with Server 2003 R2, Service Pack 2 fully updated. And uh, I've got the drivers listed here on a share. This is the uh, Evo and this is the iPack. The iPack should not need any drivers, it should be all out of the box experience, but uh, the Evo definitely needs some uh, attention. That's a very big difference between remote installation services and uh, Windows deployment services, and the, uh, including the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, is that you cannot deploy drivers as easily. Uh, WDS will just allow you to slipstream the driver uh, in the installation process, so that's pretty handy. You can just uh, basically say like, well, with this image I want to use all of these drivers and it will install them for you during the installation process and setup. You cannot do that with remote installation services to my knowledge, so you need to install the drivers manually or integrate them into the uh, install image that you added to the server. What you could also do is install a server, capture that image, and then use that on your installation services. I'm going to do it the hard way. I'm just going to install the uh, bare bones Windows images, activate them, install the drivers, and get that set up. It could be more streamlined, but I basically have so many different machines and I don't keep them for a long time, so actually completely imaging the machine is not very useful to me. Right. So, the next step, the next thing we need to do uh, is set the machines upstairs on the attic to network boot so we can start copying the files over the network. 
We are now looking at the bio screen of the Compaq EVO M1020V, which we're now preparing to set up for booting over the network. First of all, we need to make sure that the network boot is on top, which it is, and PXE support is enabled, which it is. We need to use PXE in order to get an IP address from the DHCP server, which will then contact the boot server and start loading the files over TFTP. That's basically the process behind it which means that it will copy the files over the network using the TFTP protocol to the correct IP address that DHCP has supplied to the machine. So this machine is now set up for network boot, so we're going to turn it off. And now we're going to look at the HP IPAC. HP Compaq IPAC, Jesus Christ. In my line of work I only use HP products these days, so it's quite annoying sometimes. I don't actually know the BIOS key for this machine, I haven't used this in years years, months. I'm gonna assume something like delete. This controller failure. The drive is installed, is not installed correctly or has failed. Uh, oh, apparently I upgraded the disk to a 40 gig drive. I actually forgot about that. Well, I also don't think that there's an operating system on there now, so. Yes. Give me setup. Well, that's not good. Well, got to figure this one out. Alright, I managed to get into the BIOS. It's still complaining that the drive is incorrect, so I'm not quite sure if we're going to be able to uh, properly boot from it. It does see the primary drive, so I guess it's complaining that drive 0 is not there, because I've got a jumper that has a slave drive. But it should be good. So let's look at the boot order here. We're going to put the Intel Ethernet controller as a first, well it, it cannot see the hard drive, that's weird. Uh, I can't seem to modify any of this. Well there was a BIOS password on this, so I guess... Uh, I guess it makes sense that I can't edit anything. It's probably open to read only. Network service boot is enabled, so this one is good to go as well. Uh, yeah, I can't edit anything, it's all locked. Okay. Well, it is set up correctly, so I guess that's good. So I guess we're good to go. We're gonna find out soon. First of all, we're going to see if we can boot it from the network. It's typically the F12 key. I'm not sure whether this is actually true. So we're going to go network service boot. Meanwhile, I'll also do the same on the Compaq Evo, which is already connected. Boot. Press F12, it's picked up on the server. And there we go. We're in remote installation services. As you can see, we've got two identical screens here. So that's working. All right. So we're going to do it on the IPAC first. We're going to point it to the appropriate location. For that, I need to type in the administrator password on both of these machines. Gonna do it on the iPad or the uh, Evo as well. Okay. So 
So let's move it out of the way a little bit now. So got both of these in view. I shouldn't be needing to type in anything anymore, so now we can just go ahead. I'm going to go with automatic setup. And here we can choose a couple of images that I've stored on here. The top one is Windows 2000 Professional Service Pack 4 in Dutch. The second one is XP Home uh, RTM in Dutch, XP Home SP2, and XP Professional Service Pack 3. So, on the iPad, we want Windows 2000 Pro because that's what I've got a license for. I will probably put Windows XP on it at some point just to test it. I'm going to put XP Pro SP3 on the, uh, on the Evo here. So, let's press the Enter key. And once more. And now they should start. The iPack is off to the races. And Evo is still thinking about it. Evo is not feeling quite right, so I guess it makes sense. By the way, I'm really wondering whether the uh, iPack will actually pick up the hard drive and we'll be able to boot from it. But uh, we're going to find that out. Alright, the Evo has started with Windows XP. Yep, it has found a drive. It's now formatting. Nice. They're both 40 gig drives, by the way, so that's fun. The only downside is that Windows 2000 does not do quick format. So that's going to take a long ass time for 40 gig. And Windows XP is done. I'm especially just looking to see whether it will actually format the drive correctly, whether there's actually something wrong with it. Oh wow, that was quick. Apparently it does quick format, it just doesn't show it. Huh. Well, that's fun. Alright. It's going well so far. We're imaging two machines from the network at the same time. Well, the upside is they're both on the same switch, so they're connected at full 100 megabit uh, speeds. If they were connected on my uh, on my room, they would be connected through gigabit or well, 100 megabit for these clients anyway, and then uh, over Wi-Fi with about a transfer rate of about seven megabytes, as you've seen in the video before. But uh, yeah, this is going much better. Windows 2000 is now actually ahead because it has less files to copy. Well, once this phase is over, I'll actually uh, catch up with you guys, so uh, let's uh, see you in a bit. Windows 2000 is already ready for its first reboot, so I figured it would be a good moment to turn the camera back on. Of course it's going to complain again. Let me just get there here, keyboard, and boot. I'm going to ignore the service boot this time around. It should boot from the hard drive. Or not. Huh. Well, as it turns out, it's actually not bootable in this mode. So I will actually have to take the machine apart again and uh, get the hard drive back up and running. Well, that's fun. All right. Compaq iPack is up and running again. And now it sees a different disk. Sorry about this. Just need to get in the way a little bit. But yeah, <laughs> the Evo is now in the lead because of these shenanigans. It only took me about two minutes to uh, correct the issue on the iPad, though. 
It was indeed uh, set to slave mode, and it will not boot natively from a slave, apparently. Which is interesting. Now I just wait for it to finish its boot up sequence, and it should just boot normally. It's looking good. Come on. Come on, give me Windows 2000 splash screen. Oh, great. Okay, we're going to focus our attention on the iPad. Of course, Windows 2000 is not quite as intelligent as I anticipated, so we need to go through the process on this machine again while the Evo is installing Windows XP in the background. So now we wait for this process to finish. Network service boot. Yes, please. Don't mind if I do. Press F12 again. Bruh. I press the goddamn button. Why are you ignoring me? Yeah, it's working. The keyboard is working. Come on. Give me that sweet network boot. That's what you get for being a beach. Come on. Network service boot, yes. There we go. Oh, I gotta fill everything in again. Yeah, you can't see that, okay. Um, administrator. Automatic, Windows 2000, enter, enter. It is well connected to the domain, but I really don't give a shit about that. Okay, so this is going to go through the process that you've seen before. So, we're just going to let it sit, so I can swap my battery, because this one is shit. Yes, people, it's happening. It's booting Windows 2000 from the hard drive. Well, set up anyway. Uh, Jesus. And meanwhile, the Evo is uh, doing its job. It's now running the network setup portion of Windows XP setup. That seems to be working okay. And now Windows 3000 is reaching the uh, second part of setup, so it's getting somewhere right now. With the 40 gig Maxtor Fireball drive. Yes, not a Quantum Fireball, this is a Maxtor Fireball. Because, of course, Maxtor bought uh, Quantum and then Seagate bought Maxtor. Yeah. Well, West Digital wasn't uh, as clean either. I mean, they bought HGST or Hitachi, uh, basically. So I guess they, uh, and they, uh, and Seagate bought Samsung, by the way, so. Yeah. There used to be so many different brands of hard drive on the market, and now you basically have uh, Western Digital or Seagate or HDST, which is Western Digital, so yeah. Well, and here and there you had some Toshiba drives, but uh, they're not that common. Pretty common in laptops, but not on desktop side of things. But uh, yeah, setup is going very nicely at this pace, so things are going very well. Something I want to address here, while I'm just uh, talking to the camera here, uh, you might consider like, well, why would I want to do a remote install over the network anyway? Just pop in a CD and just in install like usual. I mean, that's basically what I'm doing right here. I'm just not using ECD, I'm using the network as a medium. Well, it's a good question. 
And uh, there are a couple of reasons why you want to go with a network installation. First of all, you can do multiple installs at once. Uh, there are also ways that you can do this unattendedly. If you can just, uh, if you use the unattended XML file that comes with the Windows install CDs, or just add them to it, you can completely script your installation. So you can just run it unattended and go away, and just you know walk away, do something else, and once you uh, get back, it's fully installed. Another reason would be uh, if you actually have a problem with your CD drive or your optical drive, and your system is too old from you to boot from USB then the only real option is to either go floppy, which is a very bad idea for a number of reasons, or you can go booting from the network if your system supports network booting or PXE. Well, you actually need support for both, and they're actually intertwined, but, you know, anyway. Uh, so yeah, so there's that. In my case, I went for, uh, for the latter. I mean, the uh, the Evo has a wonky optical drive that so it works great sometimes, but completely refuses halfway through Windows setup the other time. So, And uh, the iPad does not have an optical drive at all. It doesn't even have a floppy drive. It has no way to install an operating system other than uh, over the network. So, yeah, so there is that. And it complained about the domain on the uh, on the uh, Evo there. That's pretty normal in my case. I don't want it to connect to the domain anyway, so I just ignore the error. So we'll just go in work group mode. So yeah, we're gonna just let these guys do their job again and uh, once uh, one of them finishes I will uh, get the camera rolling again so we can go through the setup oh yeah well as you can see the uh, iPack is still going at it but it's uh, definitely uh, almost done now and the Evo is now going for its first boot so we're gonna go over to that and uh, take a look at that first and yes, all that noise in the background is in fact the Evo because it is a desktop Pentium 4 in there and not a laptop Pentium 4. It's a 2.4 gigahertz Northwood, so yeah, it gets pretty toasty in a laptop like that. Let's accept that. Get that zoom level, which is right. All right. So, are we going to get intro music? You think? I'm guessing no. It's pretty old. But then again, it has such an enormous amount of drivers available on the website. It just I wouldn't be surprised if nothing is out of the box, except the network, maybe. Come on, stop teasing us. Jesus Christ. This machine is slow as molasses, but... Oh, wow. It is working. Well, that's neat. That's giving me goosebumps right there. We should have known it. Come on. Make we have a lamb. Activate. No registration. Put in my name. Speakers are pretty good on this, I have to say. Rip headphone users. It's gonna be loud. 
There you go. <laughs> All right, so the iPack is now saving settings, so it's going to be done in about a few seconds. Which is pretty good timing, honestly. I mean, I had to freaking tear it open. Alright, so XP is now installed successfully. The iPad will reboot in, well, literally like four seconds. First, I want to see which drivers are actually going to need. Okay, just video, everything else is out of the box. Sweet! It has, yeah, I think, ATI. IGP something 340M I think but uh, yeah let's leave this for now and attend to our Celeron over here the venerable compact iPack and see what's going on over here let's see if that thing will need any drivers once it's up and running Windows 2000 Professional, based on NT technology. Well, sound is working. Holy balls, that was fast. I only rarely ever see Windows 2000 boot up fast. <laughs> wow. That's remarkable. Well, video is working, I can tell. So that's good. It has an Intel, what is it, 810 graphics. I'm not going to use a password, I'm just going to log in. That's not as nice of a speaker, but it is definitely loud. Sweet Jesus. Well. So far, this project is going pretty well. That's rare for a video of mine. Sometimes I feel like Druaga 1, where just everything is going wrong. Apparently uh, we're lucky today. Aside from that little hiccup with the uh, jumper, which I never checked because I just upgraded the drive and put the machine in storage. Uh, can we do 24-bit color at 1280? Yeah, we can. Good. Let's try that. Yes, this monitor is utter crap, so... But yeah, it does run at full resolution on here, so that's good. I'm gonna put it down a notch. Let's do 1024 or 768. Yeah, that's better. Okay. That's also the native res of the Evo, so... And it's looking pretty sharp. Let's see here. Hardware, device manager... Nope, you don't need any drivers at all. Intel 810 graphics, AC97 audio, some, some something. Intel 82559 fast Ethernet LOM with basic alert on LAN. Okay. That's interesting. 40 gig Mac store, generic USB everywhere, everything. We've got freaking six USB ports on this baby. I think it's a West 6. Anyway. But yeah, 2K is working. Let's see if we can get on the internet. We probably can. Find out. Email, what the hell is that? What the hell is an email? I still use regular parcels, man. I'll stop right now. Okay. It's Internet Explorer 5. Of course it's going to throw errors. God damn. Yep, it is working all right. Sweet. Let's see if we can get it onto the network on computers nearby. Probably can't. Nope. Work group is not accessible. Service was not. St all right. Windows network. Yeah. Work group. Nope. Okay, we cannot access the network on this right now. I don't really care because we don't need to do anything. It is imaged. 
Now I can just connect this up to some shares. I will just uh, have to look and then put some software on it. But that's really not the point of this video. I just wanted to get this thing imaged because it's taken forever. Now, down to this bad boy. This thing only needs its uh, Ethernet driver, or Ethernet uh, video driver. I'm just going to lower this thing so we can get more on level with this. That's key in communication, get on the same level as your subject, right? That's all fun and games. The screen on this thing is shit, so yeah. Let's go to my network locations. This thing should be able to get a connection going. Look for computers in book groups. If that doesn't work, I'm just going to manually map to the server. I really don't give a shit. I'm using that word a lot today. I don't know what's up with me. Make sure that network cable is still in there. Well, there's one thing I've learned. Once that thing freezes, that's not a good sign. Kill it. And also, kills Explorer. GG. Oh, there's Explorer again. Spooky. Never mind. We just manually map the drive. What we need to do is do network locations anyway. Don't want to map it. It actually has a drive with a letter. There's no point. Uh, let's see. Slash slash LFS01 data. Enter. And it's got a nag for a username and password. Okay. I thought I had this set up for anonymous access, but apparently I haven't. So I guess I'll have to look into changing that. And if it will not work properly, then I will just have to revert back to Windows 2000 server for the, for the legacy file share. That's no biggie either. I know it's pretty easy to get an anonymous share going on there. Apparently on 2003 there are some additional security measures. Because of course it is a security risk, but I just don't really care that much because it's old stuff. And uh, I usually remove the gateway address from the network cards on the machines that I have on a network that are end of life. So there's no real connection with the internet, just local. And of course use strong passwords, even on old systems, that helps. That's the dump folder. We need to go to the driver folder. Come back, you go. And now we need to find out which one is the video driver. That's BIOS, touchpad driver, Realtek LAN, modem, easy access buttons. Yeah, we need those, but ATI control panel utility. No, we want to. The Jir modem, Wind Flash, Sound Max, ATI Maintenance Driver and Control Panel. That sounds good. Let's install that. That's probably a newer driver than uh, than I found elsewhere. I mean, I know there are two ATI drivers in this folder. I just downloaded everything I found on the uh, HP website, so. I think this is the latest one that it has on there. For OEM stuff, I typically just stick to the uh, OEM's drivers. Because quite frankly, the uh, video BIOS file or video BIOSes on these graphics cards are typically different enough to not accept a native AMD or NVIDIA driver. And especially if you have something uh, a bit more exotic like an S3 Super Savage or something like that you will definitely need to use the regular drivers that you can find on the uh, manufacturer's website. I just noticed that it actually veered off a little bit on my tripod. Yes, I want to reboot. Let's do that. And now, I will be very curious about whether it's gonna have working graphics or not, because I don't know. Come back. 
This is probably one of the last EVOs to actually bear the compact name with a full compact firmware. I mean, if you look on the bottom, it actually says HP. The COA is HP, but uh, yeah. At least uh, the BIOS is still compact and it's still a compact design machine. It's right around from a transition era, from like 2002, 2003, when Compaq pretty much disappeared because it was bought by HP. I mean, if it weren't for a Compaq uh, server and desktop division, I don't think HP would be would have been around anymore. I mean, I definitely don't remember seeing as many vectors as I did uh, Desk Pros, for instance. And there were definitely a hell of a lot more uh, presarios than there were pavilions. At least here in the Netherlands, where Apple wasn't as popular back in the day either. So, But yeah, we do have full uh, driver support on the video now. So I'll actually go into the properties here. Radeon IGP 340M, okay, it's using a little bit of system memory. I think I've set it to, yes, yeah, 32 megabytes. Got a hell of a lot of options for awesome gaming performance on the IGP. I don't think this is all that powerful anyway, but uh, yeah, it is at least working. So let's shut it down, so we can actually shut this video down as well. So, well that was fun. We successfully managed to image two vintage machines, well, they're at least close to being vintage now, using remote installation services from Server 2003. Again, you can also do this from Windows Server 2000, and you don't have to worry about updating your server to the latest service pack, because it will work just fine. The upside, however, to Server 2003 would be that you can actually uh, move all your legacy images over and then continue using uh, Windows image files so you can even boot uh, Windows 2000 through Windows Vista uh, and probably Windows 7 as well, I'd have to check, uh, from Windows Server 2003 uh, Windows deployment server. So that would be pretty cool. Maybe that's something I'll pursue in the future, but uh, first I need to get all of my images uploaded there. Also got like an XP, I think I have an XP Pro uh, RTM version somewhere as well. That would be quite fun to play with on the uh, HP, or HP, <laughs> I keep saying that, the Compaq iPack over there. Because I think it would run with, well with XP as well. I mean, it runs beautifully Windows 2000, but I think an old version of XP, like pre-service pack 2, would probably run very well on there as well. Anyways, um, my camera is starting to uh, nag at me for creating a way too long file right now. Uh, well, it, it just completely cut me off there. What I was going to say, well, I've been talking for way too much anyway. So I hope you enjoy this video. I thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.